Welcome back, students of fitness, to another episode of the Liftology Podcast. Rich and Joe back with you today. Joe, what uh, topic or topics did you want to discuss with us today? Today, I thought we could talk about rest um, and rest in terms of getting enough sleep, rest okay. in terms of how much rest is needed in between workouts, and then uh, intro workout rests. How much should you be resting in between sets? Okay. Uh, I, I think we have a bunch of studies uh, covering a bunch of those, right? And uh, one of them being sleep and how uh, there's a variety of different studies with uh, a, a complete lack of sleep, uh, reduce sleep, reduce sleep over a course of period of time, things like that. But general consensus wise, uh, it goes to show that um, not getting enough sleep, unsurprisingly, works into your workouts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think um, one of the one of the things to start out by mentioning is I think the fitness world in general is coming more conscious about how much sleep uh, and rest we are getting with. Um, apps on your phone that track sleep cycles and uh the whoop right the i mm -hmm. personally haven't used one but i do know that they're pretty popular and it's supposed to be about um n knowing if you're well rested enough for your next high intensity workout um, yeah uh i know f that the whoop does the whole how much sleep you got any other kinds of stressors in your life but i mean today we're focusing on sleep so the rest of that well not sleep rest in general yeah uh and that doesn't we don't need to cover all the issues that the whoop covers we're just covering uh rest today yeah like i said i, I think it's just interesting that uh it is becoming a bigger part of um actual programming actual uh training programming and um yeah you can't uh caffeine your way through no, no. sleep no, you can't. And which I think is, uh, I think it's funny because not too long ago, and it's kind of become like a meme thing now, but not too long ago, there was like this big trend where everything was um, start, like how people start their days, right? Their morning routines. Mm -hmm. And it became this big thing on, on, on the internet where everybody was like, I start every morning, you know, wake up at 6 a.m., rise and grind, do, do my you know, meditation. And then I feel like the whole thing became about like one upsmanship. Oh yeah. No, I've seen plenty of people saying I wake up at four o'clock. Yeah. You're like it, it became the same where it's like, you know, they're hyper productive where they're like, I start every day at 4am and you know, I'm in bed every night at midnight. And it's like, so you're getting by on four hours of sleep a day. Like, yeah, no, I mean, and over time you're not going to be productive at all. I wish people would be honest with, uh, the rest of their days because look it it's not for the the regular person that that's that's saying they do this yeah i mean we 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 talked about last week uh influencers and it's not just influencers it's any, anyone that uh gets paid off of how they look right like actors and actresses too like uh, i'm not to throw him under the bus but like you've seen plenty of the rock talking about uh wake up at this time and this but i would i would venture to guess that he he's he's out cold by 9 30 10 o'clock and that's still six hours of sleep yeah which they say um adults should get seven to nine but Correct. you know with every guidance there's some outliers that you might be able to get by on that but it's general guidance is seven to nine yes um for adults is yeah seven to nine um yeah, I mean, if you can be in bed every night by, you know, 9 p.m., that's great. You know, yeah. it's it's tough, though. You know, every, people have their lives to live. They have stuff they have to do, which, again, brings you to, like, the kind of celebrity aspect of it. You know, a lot of them are about, you know, wake up every morning at 4 a.m. to start your day. But it's like, you know, you, you're you're certain these people are also going to movie premieres, parties, stuff like that, like... There's no way they're starting every single morning at 4 a.m. No, and I mean, that's, 
it's the image of fitness over the reality of it and uh the glorification of all of these people is kind of what props them up even more so they they you know chicken or the egg like what yeah. came first like being glorified for it's like it's all this toxic like culture of like no rest no sleep no, the, your body needs it absolutely absolutely and in fact there have been tons of studies done to show <laughs> exactly how much rest you actually need um so i put together uh, a list here of studies as far back as 1983 um okay. that talk about sleep dep deprivation and one of the trends i did notice is it actually doesn't affect your uh workout as much as you would think um it, it does have a negative effect on workouts however it has far greater negative effect on um decision making cognition mood cognitive abilities absolutely um and when we talk in terms of athletes mm -hmm. Equally as important as the training is making good decisions. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, split decisions in a competition, yeah, stuff like sports, that. Sports, like that quarter of a second, that half a second, in order to make a read or make a decision on what you want to do, is ultimately going to be the difference between a busted play or a win, you know? Yeah. So uh, just to go over a couple. Um, so, Study done in 1983 by uh, Riley and Dakin. I'm sorry if I butcher any of these names. Um, did a study on exercise trained men um, with two and a half hours of total sleep per night. Two and a half hours less total sleep per night over three nights. Now, exercise trained men meaning people who have been working out at a regular basis. Correct. And again, it, they have found that gross motor function, which includes... Um, strength, lung power, um, and endurance while running were largely unaffected, but it had huge negative effects on psychomotor functions okay. and cognitive abilities, decision-making, um, and so on and so forth. Uh, a couple of years later in 1988, uh, Riley did another study on women, um, and, uh, same, same standards, two and a half hours total sleep a night over three nights. Um, and the findings were very similar. Um, there were more notable negative effects on reaction time. Um, I don't know if that's something that... Um, yeah, I mean, look, at the end of the day, too, like, yo, know, if you're working out and you're still getting your workouts in, in the off-season, that's not as big of a deal. Yeah. But, like, in season, yes, that's when that's it that's when it's gonna be. I mean, well, and typically in season, you're not training to become faster or stronger, either. Yeah. So, um, in 1985, a study was done testing the 40 meter dash and leg extension exercise on 64 hours of sleep deprivation, no sleep, 64 hours, and then retrained, and. That's Almost three days. Yeah. Four hours short of three days. Which yeah. is pretty wild. Um, and there was no effect on 40-meter dash times, isometric strength, or peak torque. Um, so Meaning your muscles are genera generating that force quickly. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the authors of that study concluded that brief anaerobic performance uh, can be maintained with sleep deprivation. Which um, tracks, if you're saying that, uh, strength doesn't become detrimental if you're lacking a sleep too. Yes, because right? strength is an anaerobic. Yeah, I was just going to say the key takeaway there is brief anaerobic mm -hmm. uh, performance. So, um, yeah. Um, study in 1992, no effect on gross motor function. Um, however, the um. The subjects in this study, which were swimmers, um, increased depression, uh, increased tension, increased confusion, increased fatigue, uh, increased anger and vigor. I mean, uh, and decreased vigor. Um, I mean, so again, I think mostly cognitive, mostly cognitive. However, I think that's a huge aspect of training. 
right? I, I don't yeah. think. I mean, look, everyone away... talks about motivation, motivation. Uh, I'd argue that discipline is more important than motivation. Motivation changes daily. Yeah. Discipline is like you're going even though you know you don't want to. Correct. Because you know the benefits of what you're doing. Yeah. And uh, and I think that's the important takeaway is you can look at it and say like, well, if it's not going to affect my perform my physical performance that much, should I be that concerned about it? And the answer is absolutely you should because it's going to affect your behavior, your mood, everything else, which is we think about the psychology of exercise. It's a huge aspect. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, too, like, yeah, we want our, you want to train people to be stronger, faster, and all the, but like, at what cost? Like, yeah, you have to make sure some people are right in the head. Absolutely. And then some later studies actually did start to show that with prolonged sleep deprivation. So, for instance, study done in 1994 by Riley and Piercy, um, which tested, um, weightlifting, uh, bench press, leg press, deadlift, and bicep curl, three hours total sleep per night over three nights. So now all of a sudden we're getting a little bit longer yeah. and significant decreases in submax lifts on all tasks and decrease in max bench press, leg press, and deadlift. Yeah, so basically what I'm hearing from these studies is that uh, short durations of missed sleep don't affect Correct. strength. But when you start prolonging it is when you're going to get those negative effects and as that, well. And that goes back to kind of what we were saying earlier when with all these people who are like, you know, I get four hours of sleep a night. The first two, three nights you do it might not, you might not start to feel the effects of it, but keep on doing that. And you'll see over time, yeah, you're, it's going to affect everything you do in the gym as well as you know, psychologically. So without any basis to go off of here you could have someone in theory doing those four hour nights where they go back to back boom boom uh they get their workouts done and the day three their rest day in theory could be they just mail it in they stay in they don't wake yeah. up and but you don't know that they're they're advertising this is my every day yeah yeah so yeah i think it's um and it, it goes on and on i mean um, one of the interesting ones that I saw was uh, this one in 2003. I, I can't even pronounce this name. Dweezy. Um, but um, tested after 24 and 36 hours of sleep deprivation, which was interesting because anaerobic power, which was max peak and average power, was unaffected after 24 hours, um, but then decreased at 36 hours. So just 12 hours later. Yeah. Um, and I mean, you, that's why we sleep every night. Yeah, and you <laughs> and you start to see that that uh, that big decrease there. Um, another study done in two thousand seven um, on collegiate weightlifters, uh, no difference in their snatch, clean, jerk, front squat um, for total volume or training intensity. But again, increased confusion, uh, increased fatigue, total mood disturbance, less vigor. Um, which now, if you're a seasoned athlete mm -hmm. and you're kind of you're, you're, like you said going in for that disciplined grind like you know like okay like i'm going to the gym today mm -hmm. you're gonna you're gonna get the lifts and you're gonna hit your volume and you're gonna hit your lifts you're just not gonna feel good about it you know like you're mm -hmm. gonna and in some cases form will go out the window yeah and because, because that the athletic mindset in you has the number that they have to hit. Yeah. So you're yeah. going to hit it at what cost? And I, I also think, too, that's what separates the athlete from the general population. So they're going in because they have that discipline. They're going into the gym to, to do their training. They have to do what's necessary. It's pre-programmed for them. They know exactly what they have to do as they approach competition. For the general population, if your mood is crap and you don't feel like lifting – the general population, let's assume they're going to be like, I'll just skip today. Yeah. Right? The discipline just isn't there. They're not training for a competition. Yeah. So. Which uh, will actually probably decrease their chance of getting injured because they're not a fine-tuned machine. Yeah. yeah. So they recognize that they'd probably, you know, there's no all-or-nothing mentality type thing, right? 
people live lives. <laughs> yeah, it's like absolutely. They rec like you think you could done like new new parents or whatever. Like, yeah, I was up with the baby, so like I'm gonna mail this one in because I need to rest. Yeah. Yeah. And I think having that wherewithal to kind of make that decision is important too. Yeah. You know, kind of say like I'm exhausted. Uh I'm going on three hours of sleep. I was scheduled to do my workout today, but I'd rather get a good night's sleep and hit it hard tomorrow. And I think that's Yeah. That for the for the general population, I think that's a that's a big decision to make and it's an important one to make. Well, I mean also general population, I have no numbers here to back this up, so I'm just gonna make a unsamp unsubstantiated claim here. Fair enough. Uh I would venture to say don't work out more than four times a week. So if you're working three or four days a, working out three or four days a week and you take a day off, just shift it down. Yeah. There's no like I have to go Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. You yeah. can do I mean Monday, and- Tuesday. But if Tuesday you didn't sleep well, you move yeah. it to Wednesday and you shift things uh, uh if you can. If, if you can. If and you if can. you can't I mean, you still did three days that week. Yeah. Which, like, we're not, for the general population, trying to reach a specific goal. So it's just general health and fitness. Yeah. So if you're going three days, four days a week regularly, and you go three days one week, you're still going to get the benefits of the three days that you went. Yeah. So it's like, uh, you know, if you're working out every other day Mm -hmm. and you have the ability to, you know, miss two days in a row, mm-hmm. but then get right back on every other day. What's you know, what's the difference? Ultimately, there is none. Yeah, um, or even in some cases, getting in back to back days if you have to. Yeah, um, I mean, you could recognize that, like, if you're working overnights or something. Like, we don't all exist in the same realities, so right. you have to take what you've got and work with it. Yep. Like, if you're a nurse and you're working overnight. Maybe if you go back to back days so that you know the next two nights that you're not gonna get sleep. Yeah. Which um what about working with what is available to you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean it, like you said, we all live different realities, so um just listen to your body is kind of like the key takeaway from this. Right? If if you're sleep deprived and you're feeling your mood is altered and You've been foggy all day. You know what? You know, if, if you don't, if you're not feeling like you can go in and give it 100%, you know, it, some people be like, well, 80% is better than nothing at all, but it's... Well, it's a, it depends, too. If you're like, I, I'm feeling tired. Yeah. Uh, can you even get to 80% is, is the real question. No, I'm saying some people just, like, exaggerate how tired they are just in general. Like, oh, this day oh, was that's, tough. That's true. And in that case, like... That like you're talking about like if someone knows they didn't get rested, yeah, and it's supposed to, someone's like, oh, this has been a long day, yeah, you know, it's been a long. It's day, like but... I've I've had long days where, you know, I've gone to the gym and I still was able to give 100 percent when I got there, yeah, but like it's the mental fortitude sometimes of getting there when you're sure. feeling tired. Well, it's also you know, if it's a long day. But it's a long day on eight and a half hours of sleep. You're probably good to go. Yeah, you know? yeah. That's uh, I mean, that's <laughs> yeah. what I was alluding to. Yeah, yeah. If if you're just tired from like a long day, you you your body can handle yeah. a tough workout. In stuff. which case, a workout would probably be great, right? It'd be beneficial. I feel like it'll yeah, improve, lift up your improve mood. your mood. Yeah, absolutely. A um, couple studies that uh, did show, which I thought was interesting, was um, they did a four hour delayed bedtime versus um, waking up four hours earlier. Um, and I think in two different studies, they, it showed similar I would findings. say the people that woke up early or probably did worse, right? They did, yeah, which was, which was interesting. I, I'm, this is purely anecdotal here. Uh, I find even if I get no sleep, like if I sleep late but I still wake up when I regularly do, I can still, like the, the, the start of the day is still... yeah somewhat <laughs> you can get through that's towards the end of the day where you start petering off yeah it's it's you know having a newborn that wakes you up at you know 4 a.m when you're accustomed to waking up at 7 a.m and you're not going back to sleep 
those days tend to be like the foggier days than when you're up so, later. So what I'm hearing is take the baby to the gym. Yes. Always. When you wake up at Always. four AM strap them on your strap, back. Yeah. <laughs> There's some added weight to your work out there. Uh let's see. Anything else that caught my eye here? Um well, it's just more of these all these studies back up kind of yeah. preconceived notion of no sleep equals bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean the, the I mean this empirical evidence, but like the no sleep ones more so than the than the less sleep ones too right the, the yeah well yeah a lot of the tests that were you know no sleep after 24 hours 36 hours showed more significant decreases than ones where it's like okay i got three hours less sleep per night yeah um but with that being said over time they both start to show similar negative effects yeah so no everyone out there you need rest go to sleep <laughs> um yeah, and then when talking about the general population, so we mentioned earlier um, that most adults should be getting roughly seven to nine hours of sleep per night. Um, inadequate sleep during uh, inadequate inadequate sleep duration in general population has been associated with negative health effects, including neurocognitive, metabolic, immunologic, and cardiovascular dysfunction, which I thought was pretty wild because it's basically like. Um, is like saying not only is it bad for your workouts, it's bad for everything. It's bad for your health. Yeah, which is, I mean, I I know that seems obvious, but you don't realize how bad it is for your health. Um, yeah, I mean, especially with the mentality of the grind out there that everyone has. Yeah, the grind and the hustle. Like, yeah, you should you should grind. You should hustle. And you should get but you should rest. also rest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, and that's. I think that should be the key takeaway. Is we're definitely not saying that the people out there that you know stop grinding, stop hustling, stop working as hard as you possibly can. I mean, look, if that's what you're about, by all means, go for it. Just understand that that takes a physical toll on your body. And in order to keep that mentality up, make sure you're getting proper amounts of sleep. I don't care what anyone says. If you're not resting, you feel it. Yes. Even the people that are like, I sleep four hours a day every day. And then, how, how do you feel at the end of every day? Exhausted, but I push through it. It's like, yeah, but but measurably, are you doing less? And what would the difference be is if you got an extra two hours of sleep at the end of your work days, would you be able to push through that f- faster and more efficiently? Yeah. Because if you're half half assing like your work at the end of every day, that extra two hours, like if you in theory two hours of extra work, if it, if it could be done in one, if you got extra sleep, like how does that affect it over time? Yeah, your, pro- your productivity. Yeah, I I think you're absolutely right. I think, um, and this is something I've definitely read in the past and don't quote me on this but i'm pretty sure it's basically been said that have that hard cutoff time for work right because that extra time that you go to put in at the end is actually unproductive time you don't realize how unproductive it is because you're like oh i put in that two extra hours at the end of work but like you just kind of said uh to sum that up is that amount of work that you did in two hours, had you just attacked it fresh the next day, probably would have taken you a half hour, 45 minutes. Yeah. Right? It's it's because, you know, you're... And it's healthier for you as an individual to not put that work in. Go, go grab dinner with your family. Yeah. Go, like, decompress. Yeah. Um, you know, other um, physical effects of sleep deprivation um, and associated with obesity... Uh, diabetes, um, impairments in glucose sensitivity. I mean, I could only imagine that has to do with like you're tired, your body wants sugar. Yeah. So you grab and sugar, and as we mentioned, leads to more obesity. And as we mentioned earlier, decision making. If your yeah. decision making is affected, and all of a sudden you feel hungry, 
you're gonna reach for grab a banana yeah (laughs) you know yeah you're gonna be like oh you know pop in dunkin donuts and grab that you know grab two glazed donuts for the ride home you know it's uh that sugar rush with the caffeine yeah yeah that's that's good buddy (laughs) yeah uh it negatively affects growth hormone and cortisol levels um which are competing right not so like if cortisol's stress Mm-hmm. cortisol being stress um if that's too high growth hormone is depleted um so yeah i mean for anybody out there who's obviously working hard in the gym to make gains the deprivation is going to have an effect on that as well yeah i mean so basically we're we're just telling you that you need sleep but we're providing the evidence to show you other than just you feel tired yeah um yeah, I mean, that pretty much sums it up for sleep. Um, although, uh, completely anecdotal, but um, there has been studies shown related to um, um, impairments in immune response on sleep, uh, for sleep-deprived individuals. Um, the anecdotal part being that um, I find that like when I'm sick, if I can honestly get a solid 8 to 10 hours of sleep, it's amazing how much better I feel the next day really um and when i say sick i mean like a, an actual cold right yeah. not like feeling under the weather i mean like when i have like a cold and like even a even a, a slight fever what's the first thing everyone tells you when you get sick get some rest <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely there you go yeah um so with that being said and we know the importance of sleep um i want to move to uh rest um when i talk about rest now not talking about sleep but uh, in a workout rest as far as workouts go how long should you be re- resting in between workouts and how long should you be resting uh in between exercises while working out? okay why don't we attack first the rest in the in during your workout rest during workouts mm-hmm. all right yeah that's um that's i don't want to say it's a controversial topic um i think um I think it it does get debated though, because you know people are like, well, how much rest should I be taking if I'm training for hypertrophy versus how much rest should I be taking if I'm training for power? Yeah, um, everyone's got different goals, so yeah, and there are kind of standards to follow. Um, and with that being said, I do want to start out by saying that always, especially for beginners, always take as much rest as you feel is needed to. Complete your next set with the same level of intensity that you just completed that last yeah. set. So don't just because the numbers say take this amount of time. If after that time passes, you feel like you can't do it, take a little bit extra. Take a little bit of extra time. Yeah, uh, and I think that's a really important <clears throat> takeaway because, like training in in general, when you're training to get stronger, when you're training to uh, for hypertrophy to get bigger muscles, um, there's an ad- there's an adaptation response, um, and the same goes for rest. Beginner lifters, there's a there's a psychological hurdle to get over uh, in the beginning, where you're gonna feel more tired than your body actually is. That's only because you haven't done it before. You haven't done. You haven't been there before, um, and that's something you're gonna learn uh, about yourself over time. So in the beginning, if you feel like you need to take a little bit more time, take a little bit more time. And then just like anything else, as you get better and better at it, you'll start to understand your bed, body better and better, and you can push a little bit harder. Um, so with all that being said, um, general rule of thumb for lifting. Let's talk about, um, first and foremost, training for power. Uh, what would be the... Average rest time in between sets when training for power. Training for power, like Olympic lifts or just power. Think plyometrics. Think uh, explosiveness. Yeah, you, you're probably looking somewhere at three to five minutes with that. It's a pretty standard guideline, right? Like, because yeah. you, you got to figure you're doing anywhere from two to five repetitions. They're at max effort, right? Mm-hmm. So it's each rep is going to be a max effort lift. Um, now power isn't going to be max strength 
So let's put that max effort. The, max. Correct. You are trying to lift the bar from a, from point A to point B at the fastest amount possible. Correct. Correct. Or move your body through space. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. But no, you're right. It's it's about speed, right? It's about moving with speed. Essentially, what power is. Um. So yeah, I think three to five minutes is kind of like the standard guideline, and then for strength, training for strength. Now we are talking. Again, in that low rep range, probably that three to six rep range, um, and we're talking max this, loads. Yeah, loads, not effort. Correct. I mean, it's Which still going to be very well, I mean, it's effortful. important to differentiate between the two yeah. because you need the same amount of time, more or less. Yeah. Right? You need like three minutes from a, from a strength perspective, right? Three to five again. Yeah. Right? Depending on how seasoned you are and you know if you can if you can lift the same amount the same amount of times yeah right? and I, I think the thing with strength training in particular is um because we are talking max loads i i think the difference between lifting a five rep max versus a, a two rep max changes your rest time right so you're doing your f- five rep max for uh, sets of three, mm-hmm. maybe resting three minutes is fine. But if you're resting your, if you're lifting your two rep max for sets of two, that's when you might need five or six minutes, right? Oh yeah, no, it's a higher percentage. It's a higher volume, right? Higher total volume, yeah. Higher total volume. So probably just gonna need more rest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it's it's it is kind of um, case dependent. Right, like like I said, if you're doing your five rep max for sets of two, you might be good to go after ninety seconds to two minutes, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and if that's what's prescribed for you that day in in your training, if that's what you're doing, then you know when you feel good enough to go get it again, go get it. You know, but mm-hmm. uh, the closer you get to the max weight for the amount of repetitions, the longer the rest period needs. Yeah. Uh, and then kind of standard for hypertrophy. Yeah, for that. What's, what's the rule of thumb? I've, I've, heard, I've heard anywhere from one to two minutes. Yeah. I mean, it's always going to be dependent upon the individual. That's why it's a range, not a, a hard number. Yeah. And you're talking about if it's a 12 rep max. Right? Well, not a 12 rep max. If you're doing sets of 12, like three sets of 12. Yeah. I, and you again, want to be able to get to 12 every time. Yes, correct. If if you take a minute off and you get to 10 in the second set. You, you didn't take, you you didn't didn't take enough time. Rest. Yes, correct. Um, yeah, so I guess, again, it just depends on how close you are working toward muscle failure. Right? So if mm-hmm. you're lifting your uh, a, a 12 rep max weight, sets I mean, of 10 that's a whole nother topic though you're talking about like training to failure as like a, a protocol yeah but i'm just saying how how close you so your level of intensity let's talk about like the, the level of intensity that you're lifting at um so for instance if you're working at um you know so if you're taking your 12 rep max for sets of 10 mm-hmm. Again, you're probably going to need a little bit longer to recover than if you're taking your uh, 12 rep max to sets of eight. Yeah. Right? I, I mean, it's kind of simple. It's all I know. basics like uh, percentages of what you're yeah. looking to get done. Yeah. Right? I, if you're working at a lower total. Yeah. Probably lower rest. Yeah. and, and I mean, I, I'm talking about like in the sets. Yeah. I'm not talking like if you're doing towers sets well not power sets strength sets yeah like the lower number is going to mean in that in that particular case the lower number is going to mean the intensity is a lot higher yeah but and i know this all sounds like it should be common sense but i think it's important because um you know being trainers um Mm -hmm. and having worked with um the general population how many times have you worked with a client who has performed 12 reps of a set for uh, any specific exercise and then 30 seconds later is more than capable of doing 12 reps again 
Oh, yeah. And then you say to them, okay. Well, that did, that 12 wasn't as challenging as you wanted it to be yeah. from the trainer aspect of it. Correct. And you say, okay, we could probably go a little bit heavier. Oh, I, I don't know if I can. That was pretty hard. Well, well, if you can you know, get you, back into a second set you just, 30 seconds later. You just blinked and did a second set. Like, yeah. like, you know, and I think, again, that's something for the person who's training on their own kind of learning their bodies that way is important too. If you're, yeah. if you're uh, jumping into your next set with shortened rest periods, your perceived exertion level, it's learning about rate, rates of perceived exertion. Um, and the key word there being perceived, right? A lot of people, mm -hmm. um, why don't you tell everybody what, uh, rate of perceived exertion is so when we talk about rate of perceived exertion rpe um, for sure rp we're talking about uh, a scale on one to ten um general rule of thumb is it's based off of how many reps you have left in the tank so if you do a set to um uh if you do a set to 10 reps and you call it an eight that means you could have done two more right that same weight you should able to do four 12 reps now if you're working at a rate of perceived exertion of an eight which is a fairly high intensity oh yeah no that's right? that's that's, 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 a, a, that's a good intensity to at. be working at um then that's great now if you're if you're calling it an rp of eight like i said 30 seconds later you're repeating that set and it's the same effect yeah it's not you could have probably done more not than actually at an i think eight. you could have done yeah there's a lot of people that, like, when you're training, you'll have a, a client or someone go, like, oh, that was too much. It's like, you just did it. Yeah. It obviously wasn't too much. Yeah. It, it was hard. It's supposed to be hard. Yeah. yeah. That was my favorite. That's always my favorite <laughs> line. But that was hard. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. So I, I think, and RP is something that is definitely, again, learned with experience very hard to judge that in the beginning because you don't really understand uh for beginner lifters it's very hard to understand uh actual physical fatigue versus mental right um okay so yeah i definitely think the um i i like using the rp method of training i think it's super valuable and i i do think it's something that you do have to practice, um, and it is mm -hmm. does get better as you start to um, understand your body a little bit better while working out. Um, so, uh, lastly, it brings us to endurance training, um, and so endurance training typically is very high repetitions mm -hmm. um, and very short rest. Mm -hmm. Now, with endurance training, I've heard. Anywhere from 30 to 90 seconds. I've heard people say that if you need to rest more than 60 seconds, it's no longer endurance training. It's interesting that there's a little bit of overlap there between... Well, I mean, generally training, like, across the board has overlap, yeah. Yeah. right? Your power is going to be higher if you're stronger. Correct. Right? These things, like... So, the, the, it's like murky waters between rest periods for each right because even when you're doing uh sets of 20 you want the 20th rep to be hard difficult correct so i mean you're you're looking for almost the same outcome just with more reps so you can see how they would be interconnected yeah sure yeah and it's it's also not saying that when you're training for endurance, you won't see hypertrophy. You know, like it, it, yeah, like you said, there's going to be some overlap. I mean, all of all of these types of training will improve all of the other types. Yeah, yeah, just Definitely. by happenstance. Yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe maybe less so with power and endurance, but those are at the polar opposite ends yeah. of the spectrum. And less so with experience, right? The longer mm -hmm. you train, the more dialed into uh, the specifics. Of oh well, yeah. When, when you're that you far in, you're you're specifically training for certain outcomes. Yeah, 
Yeah. So then if you're, if you're training to be an Olympic lifter, you're not going to be doing endurance training. No. But uh, I mean, at the same time, I mean, even for the general population, if you've been training seriously um, for longer than two years, you're probably a fairly experienced lifter. You, I'm, you're certain to have made all the neural adaptations that are going to be made, right? So I feel like at that point, um, even um, the weekend warrior has to start dialing in their training a little bit more to be um, goal centric. You know, what am I training I mean, for? Everyone's always going to hit a pl- plateau when they're training. Yeah. When you get to that plateau, it's like, what do I have to do next? Yeah. You know. Yeah. So we kind of gave our uh, our estimates, not estimates, kind of general you know, guidelines. The general guidelines. Um, you know, a study done in uh, 2008 um, describes the uh, rest between sets as a multifactorial phenomenon that is affected by several factors. However, summarizing previous research, uh, some specific rest periods between multiple set training for Following training protocols are as follows. Muscular endurance training, 30 to 90 seconds. Hypertrophy, one to two minutes. Power, three minutes, which I thought was interesting. Uh, muscular strength. Uh, for clients less adapted to strength training, four to five minutes. Muscular strength for clients well adapted to strength training, three minutes. Which is kind of uh, what we, we mentioned earlier before we even read that. That was interesting. Um, Kind of saying like how your experience in lifting affects how much rest you need. And then hearing the power being three minutes instead of like five makes makes sense if you think about it because it is a sub-maximal load as opposed to True. strength training is going That's to be a, a maximal point. load. Yes, I didn't even... So, uh, you know, it's not going to be as taxing. You, you need, you're going to need more... The recovery aspect of it's going to be probably more towards the um, making sure you can generate the force through rather than the weight being difficult. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. No, it does. That that makes total sense. Yeah. I, at the time, I didn't, I didn't, and you said it's not about the load that you're lifting, it's about lifting your speed, and I still didn't make that connection. But yeah, no, it definitely makes sense that, um, yeah, I mean, even, like, people that have been in the industry for a long period of time, like, if you take a step back and really think about, like, the things that you were told, like, five minutes for power, you would see a study that says three minutes. Yeah. Then you start to deconstruct why. Yeah. You can kind of understand that it makes a little bit more sense. You know, it's a hard industry to make changes to because so much of it gets ingrained in in like there's there's certain people that are still following like Schwarzenegger's protocol from the eighties. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just like that's the way it was, so that's the way I'm gonna do it. Schwarzenegger's protocol from the eighties was what? Take lots of steroids and uh Well I mean <laughs> spend six hours in the gym. <laughs> that's that's a whole nother <laughs> yeah, I mean his programming. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. Because, but but the steroids. The he oh, a, yeah. He still, he still did the work. Yeah. yeah. With yeah. help, but. He really did spend like day, like full days in the gym too, right? Like he'd be there for like hours on end. Yeah. I mean, then we could wow. we could actually circle that, circle back with that in the same regard as like influencers on Hollywood actors. They spend all this time doing all this work. So like their job is to look good. Yeah. So they can. They have all that. If your job is to look good, you're not going to be looking good at a desk. Yeah. You're going to be at the gym. You're going to be out and about. And a lot of these people uh, from the Hollywood aspect have chefs too. So they don't even think about what they're eating. They're just being like, uh, they get a a dinner bell and it's like, oh, time to eat. I I made you your food. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, so. Coming back to power um, real quick, though, I did find a study that I thought was pretty cool that talks about intraset rest intervals. Now we're getting even beyond the resting in between sets. It's actually resting during a set and calling it a set, right? Okay, so like if you're doing a set of three, 
not doing one, two, three, but breaking that up even. So, like, if you're doing, like, a set of six, for instance, you do three, take a short rest, do another set of, th- do the same set of another three reps, and then take a longer rest period. People are looking for grant money left and right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah <laughs> but it, it's, Hear me out. Hear me out. I got an idea for a study. <laughs> Interest set. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure that you have the results. Yeah, no. So, uh, so the argument was that um, fossil creatine stores, which fossil creatine being uh, the main fuel used for short burst mm-hmm. um, um, muscle contraction, right? Mm-hmm. Um, fossil creatine stores uh, that may result in higher velocities and rates of force production um, can be resynthesized in one minute by oxidative metabolism, which was interesting. Um, so you would think like, oh, so you only need to rest for one minute. doesn't take into effect cumulative effect of then doing the next reps, right? Okay. Um, so um, to take advantage of the fast component of phosphocreatine resynthesis, uh, an athlete could perform blocks of one to three repetitions with 20-second pauses between blocks. Uh, this strategy may provide a more effective stimulus for power development. Um, so, just to break that down, it's basically like saying, like, taking um, a total set of eight, doing two reps, rest for 20 seconds, two reps, rest for 20 seconds, two reps, rest for 20 seconds, finish your two reps, rest for three minutes. Okay. Right? So, I guess if you're, you know, if, again, you're... I mean, you're you're talking, like... The extreme, like the people that are training for the Olympics, are the ones that are probably going to be following a protocol like this. Yes, this is this, this is, isn't for a general population. I mean, it applies to the general population. Yeah, but the major, the discipline for having, you need someone with a timer. Yeah, on you, yeah, you're not going to yeah. have a watch. No, it's, it's looking and it's definitely. This is again getting into like more advanced levels of training, but um. It is just interesting to to see that, um, you know, like like I said, you can you can replenish your fossil creatine stores in a relatively short amount of time, and be as explosive um, versus doing four consecutive reps, right? So it's like jumping as high as you can two times, Take stopping, seconds, do it again. and then jumping as high as you can. You're likely to reproduce the same height versus Jumping as high as you can four times in a row. Yeah. Um, like I said, I, it's advanced stuff, but it's just interesting. Um, so, um, let's see. Because purpose of power development, various benefits might be gained by splitting sets into blocks of three repetitions with approximately two minutes rest during peak phase. Fa- uh, during peak phases or in season training phase. So yeah, obviously they're talking about people training for sport specific stuff. Yeah. That's uh what I was alluding to. Yeah. Um and for strength we said generally one to two minutes. Mm-hmm. Um now a lot of studies were done um that um that were relatively high set totals, okay. um, which I guess for strength, that kind of makes sense. Cause if you're trying to hit total volume, but you're only doing sets of three, four or five, you can't just stop after two or three sets. Right. Cause your total volume is going to be way down. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, so most, most of the studies that uh, I looked at kind of came back with the, um, the same, same results. Um, there was one study, Willardson, Willardson, Willardson and Burkett found no differences in back squat strength increases following 13 weeks of training in groups that rested two minutes versus four minutes. Um, okay. Okay. Well, that, that makes sense. I mean, they're doing the same total volume. You're talking about rest periods, but like... The whole point of the rest periods is to be able to get the volume done. So 
Yeah. If you're if you're falling on any side of that that spectrum, but you're still producing the work. Yeah. I'd imagine I'd imagine everything with all of these studies, everything else is control, right? So they're probably monitored how much sleep they were getting as well without without looking into the study. Yeah. Like I could only imagine every other aspect they had being the same because you want to limit the amount of variables that yeah. would alter the the results of the So interesting study. interestingly enough with that study is it was trained individuals. So okay. for trained individuals resting two sets uh, resting two minutes between sets versus resting four minutes between sets no significant difference which mm-hmm. again goes in power output or with, strength output strength output which again kind of goes to the fact that experience matters right so for a beginner lifter when training for strength and you're doing heavy loads or low repetitions it's there's a huge psychological demand that occurs mm-hmm right? And um, you might need to take that four minutes. However, somebody who's been doing it for four or five years, mm-hmm. two minutes, four minutes, are it's not used, gonna... Are used to the stressors are, that are put on the body. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. When I'm saying uh, all the other variables are the same, right? If you, if you take untrained an untrained population, there's going to be a multitude of variables. Yes. yes. So working with trained athletes, you know, they know their body, they're getting the sleep that they need. Yeah. Um, all the other factors are going to be similar because most of these trained athletes have similar protocols. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, again, just experience matters. Um, and, I, you know, by experience, I mean um, consistency um, in experience, right? Not. Mm-hmm. Not, not, well, I lifted for five years and then took 10 years off. And then, so I'm experienced. I know what I'm doing. Like, no, it, that's not what I'm talking about. It's more just if you've been doing it long enough, your, your body's, your brain is going to start to align with what your body's capable of. Exactly. Yeah. Um, um, oh, this I, I found interesting. Um, the role of synergist, mm-hmm. uh, synergistic muscle groups um and recovery um synergistic muscle groups being not the, not the primary movers. primary movers so so if a, you're talking about a bench press you're talking about someone's triceps yeah uh, or i think that that's a good example but i think a really great example was uh when they looked at the deadlift and mm-hmm. people's forearm strength having mm-hmm. an effect on the next set more so than Grip strength having a bigger effect on the next set, first set, than the fatigue in their posterior chain. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's a, that's another thing to take into consideration. Sometimes a longer rest time is needed, not because you can't perform the exercise, you but physically can't hold on to muscles. the ball. Yeah. Right. Like if uh, so, you could take that into um. That same forearm strength in in for uh, like lat lat pull downs, right? If your if your back is able to pull down all the weight, and you have no issues, that's fine. But if you if you if you could keep doing reps, but your hands are giving out, yeah, doesn't matter. You're not doing the reps because you're not holding it. Yep. Yeah. So it, just another thing to just kind of. Keep in mind, keep in the back of your mind when you're resting, um, you might need to take a little bit longer. Not because, again, you don't think you're, uh, the primary mover is physically capable of doing it, but because of the secondary stuff that, um, you know, core strength mm-hmm. for, for squats, for, for deadlifts, for um, yeah. uh, forearm strength for deadlifts. Right, all those, all those other th- little muscles that there is a balance that you have to have with uh, keeping your ego out of it, right? Yeah, and pushing yourself. Yeah, and uh, it reminds me of that Burger King commercial, guy, the guy with the the Whopper commercial with the guy with the little hands. He... I don't remember. Oh. <laughs> I don't remember. No, go on. He, I I want to hear uh, this. He was like, <laughs> he's just like, he's like, 
I, I always wanted to eat a Whopper, but I got these little hands, and he's got like these little tiny hands, and he can't hold the Whopper. <laughs> it's like I always wanted to deadlift more, but I got this weak grip strength, you know? It's... That's great. <laughs> and you see so many things online. Have you seen these little tiny hands, like things that people put on their fingers? No. Yeah, they're little... They diverge a little bit here. They're these little hands. They look like real hands, but they're, they fit on your finger. And people... Like make all these TikToks and weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stay weird, people. It's fun. <laughs> um, let's see. What? So what haven't we covered yet? We talked about hypertrophy. Mm-hmm. Um, power, strength, uh, rest for endurance. We have. Oh yes, because I know we said that. Um. I've seen anywhere from like 30 to 90 seconds. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's another factor rather than just the rest though, right? Yes. There is load being used. Okay. Um, and by that, um, what, what we mean is specifically training for endurance, you want to keep your rest cycles short, right? That's mm-hmm. the, the definition you want to keep of your... endurance. Um, With that being said, if you were to take, if you were to limit yourself to a hard 30 to 45 second rest Mm -hmm. uh, and you're doing 20 repetitions of a, of a certain weight, that's probably that probably that is not enough time to recover fully. Yeah. If, if 20 reps was, if your 20th rep was a struggle. Yes. And you take 45 to 60 seconds instead of the 90 that is uh, generally accepted as the time yeah. needed. Typically less than a minute. Yeah. Uh, if you can't get out to the 20, then you're not doing another set of 20. Yeah. And then you know, so, it starts to fall more towards that hypertrophy zone of rep ranges. Mm-hmm. Right. So if your goal is to do 20, you take 30 seconds off, you pick up the same weight, and you start doing your next set, and you're only getting to 14 reps. That's you're starting getting close to the hypertrophy end of, of things. Correct. So general rule of thumb when training for endurance is if you're limiting yourself to that hard 30 seconds or that hard 45 second rest. Lower the weight for the next rest. Lower the weight for the next set. Sorry. Set. Yeah. Because the goal is to get to 20. Yeah. Not to, it's not about the weight that you're lifting. It's, it's the amount of times you did it. Correct. Because that's what endurance is, right? How many times can you get the contraction of the muscle you know, for example, with with, curl. with being loaded, yeah, obviously, yes, yeah, it's a big part of it. I yeah. can do this all day, <laughs> as Captain America, yeah, famously said. Um, so some of the factors that affect the uh, length of a rest interval. Okay. Um, just kind of summarize. Um, exercise order. Okay. Right, so let's think about if you um, work out your synergistic muscles before the main lifts, correct. quote unquote, it's gonna affect. It's gonna affect those. Okay, those lifts. So, kind of want to make sure you're hitting those primary movers first. Yep, bigger lifts first. Um, you know, you don't want to start um a back day with a you know six sets of bicep curls mm-hmm. and then try to do lat pull downs. Uh, here's an uh, an analogy that I I've heard used with many things, and this is like one way where it would apply. Like if you have a jar, and you filled it with sand first, you wouldn't be able to drop like marbles into it, like the bigger yeah, pieces yeah. of the puzzle. Correct. But if you did like I like bigger that. bowls than even marbles, yeah, and you drop them first, then the marbles would fill out, yep. then the sand would fill out. So. That analogy being getting the bigger work done first and then uh, finishing it off with the quote-unquote smaller stuff. Yeah, you know, I've never heard that analogy, but I really like that. That's good. Real good. Stick around with me. you get one of those every <laughs> once in a while. Even a broken clock, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, what else? Training intensity. Okay. Um, again, something that's learned over time. Um, takes practice to get there. Um, but understanding true intensity versus what you think is difficult versus what's actually difficult. Yeah, is we gonna... harken back to the RPE that we were Yeah, 
and th that's going to change your rest intervals. Um, total muscle mass of the individual. You have more muscle mass. Mm -hmm. So you don't need to rest as long as somebody who doesn't have as much muscle mass. It, I mean, that's kind of common sense. I mean, I, I feel like that's something we could come back to in a later episode where we talk about uh, absolute strength versus relative strength. Yeah. Because muscle mass will play a role in that yep. as well. Yep. Um, training history, again, experience is going to affect it. Um, muscle fiber composition going to be a huge thing now that's genetic we can't you know <laughs> yeah, I was gonna, sorry you, you, you dropped that one now yeah. i was like there's nothing anybody can do Some about people that are just sol sorry about that but um but, i mean you look at the individual like everyone is born with an inherent advantage towards one aspect of those things yeah right we look at even the difference between ourselves i have uh shorter levers yeah which uh make it easier for me to get heavier weights through it ends up being a smaller range of motion yeah i mean the degrees in going from zero to 180 still are yes are there yeah. but i have to move through a, a smaller range yeah however and then you know uh elite marathon runners will every time outpace a power lifter in an endurance run. Yeah. No yeah. matter how much you train. Yeah. That's just how it goes. Yeah, I mean, you know, genetics obviously play a, a huge role in, in fitness. And look, it, it's not about, uh, you know, trying to reach the potential of somebody else. It's, it's just about trying to reach your max potential. That's that's yeah. the main thing. Um, and then, of course, uh, circuit versus consecutive sets. Okay. Another big factor. Because I like the idea of circuit training for reduced time when, right? For time frames. Because if you're alternating, let's say, between an upper and a lower body exercise. Yeah. I, it, I like that as well because your lower body is resting. Correct. While your upper body is working, and it's not synergistic, so everything that you need in the lift Correct. is recovering. So, yeah, and I think what's great about that is the amount of rest time needed between exercise then is the amount of time it need, you need to just catch your breath and jump into that. Yeah, so for instance, if you have, let's say, a circuit of three, where you go like upper body, lower body, four. Some kind of core exercise. Because uh, generally, overloading a core exercise is hard to do. Yeah. I but mean... uh, by the time you get back to the first exercise, you're only probably going to need about 30 seconds to keep going. Yeah, 30 seconds, maybe a minute, um, depending on specifically what that first exercise is. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean... Basically, it's like your upper body has rested the amount of time it took you to do lower body exercise, the amount of time it took you to do core exercise, and then the amount of time you actually took to rest. Yeah. So if the other two exercises took a total of a minute and then you're taking a minute rest, that's a full two-minute rest before you're coming back oh, yeah. to hit that first no, I, I said 30. I mean, you're splitting hairs here. I only said 30 because most of the time you're not going – Leg exercise, immediately core exercise. Yeah. People kind of meander yeah. to the, like, which is fine because you're still working Again, a three like exercise said, set. You're catching your breath. Yeah. You know? It's, it's, it's efficiency. Yeah. In your workouts. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, which would help people that are time crunched. Because yeah. Because if you, if you do a set of bench press and then you have to wait two minutes to do another set and then you, you're trying to do, let's say you have the same exercises in your plan as we had for our three circuit set. If you do them consecutively, you're going to be there a lot longer. Yeah. Correct. And especially, you know, when, I guess when training for strength, you got to understand that it's going to be a session. 
You know, you're not going to be yeah. you're not going to be in and out in in 20 That's minutes. That's why you see some people go in there with blankets and pillows yeah. for their rest time <laughs> yeah. in between their sets. Yeah. yeah, you know, if you're doing, you know, I mean, just a single exercise of, you know, deadlifts and I'm going to I'm going to go super hard. I'm going to hit, you know, three rep max for eight sets of two. You're resting, That's a long time. You know, yeah, you're resting three minutes, That's four minutes in between sets. That's a long time for one exercise. Yep. Yeah, a lot. Yeah. And uh, psychologically, that takes a lot out of you, too. You know? And then, yeah. you know, after that, then you go and you're doing your... People lifting like that, though, are a different breed. Yeah. yeah. And in a good way. <laughs> no, absolutely. I mean, yeah, the, the strength athletes are, are wildly strong. Yeah. It's very cool to see. Um, so that being said, let's touch briefly on how long you should be resting now in workouts. Yeah. Right, so now that, now that we rested up for our workout, we figure out how much we're working out, how much yep. we're resting in between sets. It's time to go over uh, after your workout and when your next workout should be. Yeah. So why do we need to rest in between workouts? Muscles need to repair. Muscles need to repair, right? That's first mm-hmm. and foremost skeletal muscle damage. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, when you contract a muscle multiple times against resistance, it's going to create tears. Um, you're blowing yeah. the muscle up. The repair of those micro tears is what get your your increased hypertrophy from. Yes, correct, correct. Um, the other things are going to be to um um replace substrates right because exercising de- substrates um oh yeah now you're getting to the the chemistry of it yeah right? which you know from an educated perspective not everybody has that knowledge you yes. know you read an article on shape or <laughs> men's fitness they're not going to go over typically the chemistry of it right no, but i i think it is you know, it is important to understand why you're feeling certain ways after after an exercise oh, or after yeah. a workout. No, I, I personally love having yeah. that knowledge. It, so kind of a nerd with we, that. We kind of briefly touched on the fact that like phosphocreatine replenishes mm-hmm. rather quickly. Mm-hmm. Right. But you know, once we start talking about like aerobic pathways of right and then um recovery is a little bit longer. Mm-hmm. Right? And by a little bit longer, I mean hours to days, essentially, yeah. right? Um, um, As opposed to minutes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I want to talk about quick. Uh, oh, actually, yeah, this, this was so. We talked about phosphocreatine, the other one being glycogen. Mm-hmm. Glycogen's pretty important. Didn't mm-hmm. bring that up earlier. Um, the which is the primary substrate for glycolysis, mm-hmm. which, which is longer term energy, right? So if we think of phosphocreatine as being that short burst, think of um, explosive yeah, running, anaerobic, running really quick, fast powerful. for ten seconds mm-hmm. versus running five miles, mm-hmm. right? Um, so obviously stores of glycogen take a lot longer than to replenish than stores of phosphocreatine. Correct. So that's why, um, you need to rest and the accumulation of metabolic byproducts while working. Mm -hmm. Um, which everyone is familiar with the big one being lactic acid, lactic acid buildup in my muscles. That's why it burns so much. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. Why don't you tell everybody why it's not um, that, what, yeah. and what the real reason you're getting that burning is from? So, the burning that you're feeling for muscles is uh, more because of a pH imbalance in the muscles, um, not necessarily because of lactic acid. Um, um, I mean, it, it is a fun catchphrase to keep saying. Yeah. I, I won't. I won't. I won't pretend like I don't like saying. Yeah. Um, So as you're creating energy, you create these byproducts. Yeah. Um, Again, in the chemistry aspect of things. 
Yeah. Right. Um, one of them being lactate, and being protons. Mm-hmm. Um. Um. So lactate has been found to hinder the electrical stimulus for muscle contraction, yeah. which is like the inability yeah. to continue. Like to... yeah, you your your body won't let you lift. Yes. And people attribute that to the that burning. burning. Like yes. if you're doing a bicep curl and you can't get your arm, yeah, you feel the burn in your arm. But that's not the reason yeah. that you can't lift. Was it that goes a... side by side with the excess amount of protons in your system. Yes, which is going to throw off the, the, the pH balance of the pH balance of the muscle, and that's that's what that burning is actually going to be. Um, what was um? Wasn't there like a scene in the movie Dodgeball? When, uh, there was definitely a scene in the movie, but when he's uh, uh, when he's like doing the squats and. I don't know. I feel I'll like feel he's, the burn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, it's talking about lactic acid. It, it's um, yeah. I think that's just one of those things. Like over time, that whether correct or not was just uh, said absorbed so, into the uh, said so frequently. It just became the zeitgeist of uh, yeah, working out. Right? Yeah, and you know what? I mean that there's no reason for general population to really know what's causing the burning. Oh, yeah, um, no, I mean, like, we're talking about this now to inform people. Yeah. And we generally enjoy knowing this stuff. Yeah. But this isn't for everybody. This is just for people who want to know a little extra. And, you know, when I'm doing hobbies or I want to consider working out a hobby, but, you know, some people do. When I get involved in those things, I I try to learn everything I can about it. Yeah. A little... Yeah, absolutely. I might be a little over the top in those things, but I mean, there are people like me, I I presume. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, they're out there. But uh <laughs> far and few between. But, <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah. Um Yeah, so typically rest between exercise bouts. Um a couple studies that I want to just touch on briefly. Um now the only fault of these studies is um so for instance the first one um, McCluster et al. trained males uh, three sets of 10 repetitions using their 10 rep max weight of eight different exercises, all to momentary muscular failure, um, were asked to replicate the workout after 24, 48, 72, and 96 hours of recovery. None could replicate the workout after 24 hours, 40% after 48 hours, 80% after 72 or 96 hours. Um, again, now that's kind of like an extreme case right Mm -hmm. because you're taking three sets of 10 using your 10 rep max weight typically people aren't working out that way right um well this the the studies going for the extreme for the um when you go to the extreme with these exercises not these exercises i'm sorry with these studies that's when the differences between the time is going to be more pronounced right yes if it's not as large of a difference you're not going to see it as well correct Correct. so that's statistical significance and mm -hmm. whatnot so yeah so uh, yeah i get it so that you know they have to do these extreme protocols in order to kind of set these general guidelines right Mm -hmm. they take the extreme and from that they you you start to work and fine-tune it yeah um one of the uh, important things to note um is that when that same study was repeated with an older population of males, age 50 to 65, um, there was a delay in recovery, which, again, well, that almost seems common typically sense, because but... you're getting older, right? Your yeah. body doesn't repair itself, doesn't as recover quickly. as fast. I mean, that's the unfortunate nature of getting older. Yeah. Um, so, uh, in a study, the effects of different um, between test rest intervals and the reproducibility of the 10 repetition maximum load test um, by Montero et al. 2019 concludes that the optimal between test rest interval duration for 10 rep max, max testing by the best reproducibility and resistance trained men appears to be 48 to 72. And that's going to be based on how much they train and a multitude of factors. And again, that's to reproduce a 10 rep max test. Yeah. And Which I mean, again, let's face it, not everybody who works out 
is that in tuned with their workout. Yeah. Right. That's why you have people going, like, I did three sets of 10 for this much and I don't get stronger because you're not pushing yourself. Yeah. Now, with that like, being said, you don't necessarily always have to be lifting your 10 rep max. For oh, 10 no. Reps. No, I, I, don't, I don't mean if it yeah. came across that way. I don't mean for it to sound like that. But, um, but yeah. So, again, they, they take that extreme and figure, okay, so you, um, anywhere from 48 to 72 hours for the max load. Um, and to reproduce that 10 rep max test. Yeah. So, you're t- looking typically two to three days. Of that exercise. Correct. So and if now you that's get on those, the extreme end. Yeah, and that's on the extreme end. So you take those, right? If you do those two times a week, and then you do the opposites of those exercises two times a week, you're looking at your body able to produce all those exercises twice a week, which will benefit you greatly instead of doing it once a week, having like a chest day and having a back day. Having hitting the exercises twice a week is substantially more beneficial. Yes, that's your total. You're increasing the total volume mm-hmm. for that week. Um, yeah, it's plus. I don't know what the studies on this show, so we, we'd we'd have to look that up and report back to everybody if we if we get to it. Um, I'm sure the work. I mean, the rest period you need for the work that you do, if you do a typical chest day, is going to be above and beyond the 48 to 72 hours that we're talking right here with the 10 rep max. Yeah, well, because a lot of it has to do with um, overall breakdown of the skeletal muscle tissue. So if you're doing seven, eight, nine different exercises, focusing on one muscle group, 48 hours later, you're not going to be able to hit those same intensity. No. Um. So, you know, again, so general rule of thumb, breaking that down, um, resting, you know, can work out in consecutive days. The idea is to work out different muscle, different groups. muscle groups. Um, however, taking a full day in between, great idea. Why not? Mm-hmm. Uh, you will be fully recovered for your next workout. Um, again, but still 24 hours later, still focusing on different muscle groups. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, I guess. Uh, I guess you would say that. Um, considering we're not always working out. Um, to reproduce that ten rep max rest, forty eight hours is sufficient time to rehit the same. Yeah. <clears throat> so. Uh, yeah, that pretty much does it for rest. Um, yeah. covered a lot there. Yeah, take it in, rest up, and uh, we'll catch you guys in the next one. Yeah, get some sleep.